Hey guys, Primal Chaos here, welcome to the channel. Um, today I thought I'd step away from <laughs> what I've been doing, which is essentially just falling down a ginger rabbit hole. Um, thanks again, guys, That's that's been an amazing journey. Um, but I wanted to do something a little bit different, uh, and one of the bands that consistently comes up for from you guys as recommendations that, uh, is something that I might like, is Gojira. I have no concept of what these guys sound like. Um, I've never heard any of their stuff and I just went on YouTube and just Googled uh, and just and just searched and I came up with Amazonia, uh, which is a new song. I'm sure you guys will tell me in the comments whether or not it was would have been better to go back and do something earlier. Um, but I figure, look, I really want to hear what the band sounds like today and then maybe I can go back and, and find out more about their history and their evolution and stuff later on. Um, what am I expecting? I don't know, really. Um, I think possibly based on some stuff you guys have said maybe a little bit more technical guitar stuff i think you, they've been recommended to me as a guitar based sort of tangent um but you know what i can talk all day let's just take a listen <laughs> let's have a look oh oh wow It's really cool they're playing around with with pitch there they're sort of bending into the note to make it sound more like a, an organic sort of ethnic instrument um and also the rhythm has that sort of bounce to it like a tribal dance thing um the only reason i picked up on that really is the imagery but that's that's what it is it's an interesting sort of bounce plays a telly You know, it's going to be an interesting guitar band when one guy's got a Fender Telecaster, which is really known for its clean, plinky sort of country sound. Um, and another guy has like a Flying V, which is known for face melting solos and shredding. <laughs> Great rhythm. Good voice. Good riffs. That's a jaw hop. I never thought on this journey into extreme metal I'd hear a jaw up. <laughs> okay, serious face. Obviously, the subject matter here is is about the burning down of the Amazon forest. It's it's not even thinly veiled rhetoric in the lyrics. It's it's quite obvious what's going on. Um, you know, and it's all about greed. We're destroying basically one of the world's greatest um, assets for the sake of, of finance and money. Um, and it's, it's a complicated debate too, because, you know, the people who, a lot, a lot of the people who are involved in doing it are local and local government sort of things as well as obviously international, um, interests. Um, it's not an area of, of expertise for me, but what I can tell you 
is that um, I spent a, a big chunk of my childhood living in the uh, the jungle um, highlands of Papua New Guinea and living, uh, you know, I, I was a young child, like maybe five or six years old, but I spent a, a, a year or so literally dropped into the jungle um, dealing with, you know, raw indigenous cultures and stuff like that. Um, and so, so I can relate to this to some degree, looking at this imagery of, of the native people and stuff like that. And, you know, they, they live in a world where they, they exist in, in a, in a space where there's, there's influence from these external forces. Like, um, th th they live in like a time frame that hasn't changed much for centuries or even thousands of years. And then this external influence just appears and just railroads the entire region and, and nothing can really stay the same. You know, like, in fact, on Christmas time, my dad was telling us stories and stuff. He obviously remembers things more. We were there, he was in the army and we were there based on a small army base, literally on the highest mountain in Southern Papua New Guinea. Um, and he was telling us while we were there, um, a new tribe was discovered that nobody had, had an, any, any interaction with at all, you know, and, and this wasn't a super unusual occurrence at that point, but even like the locals had no idea that these people lived there and nobody in the region could even speak their language, you know? And, uh, so it's, it's, it's really interesting seeing cultures clash like this, but the spoilers of it all is that it never ends up all that good for the people that get discovered. If you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That seems like a real interesting singing technique there. It, I don't know if it's just mixed low or whatever, if he's doing some low guttural kind of throat singing. Um, it could just be he's singing low and it's really down in the mix, but it kind of almost sounds like, almost like Tibetan throat singing maybe. I'm gonna jump back a little bit, see if I can see where that comes in. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it's way down there. That scene right there, as much as this is a completely different culture, is is very familiar to me. Man, what a tragedy. It's a really interesting guitar tone choice and it's it's obviously been chosen for that reason um it's a super low gain there's a little bit of distortion on the sound um the choice of a telecaster is nice because it has much more of a natural tone than something like you know like this is much more aggressive um the pickups in this are very high output which means that even if you plug them into a clean sound uh, in an amp, you still get a certain amount of distortion, you know, um, depending, I mean, you can always dial back the volume, but if it's, if everything's running on 10, this guitar is going to be more of that metal riff sound that you're familiar with drop tuning and stuff like that sounds great in a guitar like this and a guitar like this, which is what he's using there. It's just much more of great for plucking and picking and things like that. And don't get me wrong. Um, there are metal guitarists out there who use this. I believe John five, who's most notably was Marilyn Manson's guitar player. 
um, is known for using a telly as mo super modded and stuff like that. But it's it's definitely this aesthetic, you know. Um, but yeah, essentially, I don't know if he, if he, if this guy consistently plays a, a Telecaster. Um, most people don't sort of jump around too much with their guitar choices as their main guitar. Um, but it, you know, um, it, 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 at this point, what it does is it allows him to sort of get that plucky sort of guitar sound, um, that in this case is sort of emulating some sort of tribal thing, like a didgeridoo or something like that. Uh, just a really clever choice musically. I'm going to jump back. Sorry. Just a subtle quarter note bend. Bam, 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 bam. bam. jaw harp <laughs> commonly you know historically known as a jews harp but uh whenever i've seen one on the shelf it's been called a jaw harp so i don't know how, <laughs> how people feel about that um wow look honestly um i'm not a very politically driven person uh, i'm just not that kind of guy who goes to marches or pickets or does stuff like that i just you know don't have time in my life for that sort of thing however it's hard not to be a little involved in, you know, feelings wise with, with the imagery we just saw and stuff like that. But yeah. Uh, anyway, I'll be right back guys. You know, color blindness is something I'm really passionate about. It's something that I'm affected by and, uh, one in six guys out there and one in 200 women are as well. Uh, you can do something about it. Click the link in the description. It'll take you to in Chrome. You can do an eye test, find out what sort of color blindness you have. Uh, and also while you're there, pick up some corrective glasses. Um, if you use the code in the checkout chaos, it'll get you 10% off. Um, definitely take a look. I'm a big fan. They have some stunning glasses. My um, Enchroma sunglasses, I wear them every single day. Thanks again, guys. Check out Enchroma. Um, tell them Primal Chaos sent you. All right. So what can we say about Gojira Amazonia? Um, well, first of all, what I want to say is I'm not sure if this is typical of the band. Um, this definitely seems to be a protest song. And I don't know if it's going to be indicative of the rest of their catalog. Um, it definitely has a flavor musically that lends itself to the concept of like the narrative that they're putting out there. Um, and so I wonder if this is, was a, was a good example of what to do from them. Um, you guys will obviously tell me in the comments. Um, but it's, it's a cool song. It does exactly what it wants to. There's, there's no poetry in the lyrics whatsoever. It's just straight down the line. Um, you know, <clears throat> um, which is, which is an interesting sort of, tool to use because with something like this you don't want to get your message mixed up as i've said before the reason i don't like to interpret lyrics too much on this platform is because i like people to have their own interpretations of the poetry um because everybody has their own feelings about stuff like that in this case you can't there's no confusion it's straight down the line this is the message uh and i think that was a good a good choice on their behalf maybe that's not indicative of how they typically write lyrics but in this case it's it's a tool that serves the mission of the song, which is to educate people about what's going on in the Amazon. Um, <clears throat> the imagery, as I said, is very bold, you know, um, just the decay of the region, the anger and the passion of the locals, um, and all that sort of stuff. So it's, yeah. Wow. Like I said, I'm not a political person. I don't tend to, um, wear my politics on my, 
on my heart, on my shirt, you know. Um, but you can't look at this imagery without feeling a little bit passionate about it. You know, there's, everybody's going to have an opinion on this. So, um, and it, it seems strange that anybody would have the opinion that, yeah, it's totally cool what's going on there. You know, um, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. This isn't my field of expertise, but so yeah, musically, I thought there were some really cool choices instrumentally. It's got a, uh, a, an ethnic flavor to it. I'm not sure where Gojira are from. Maybe they're from South America as well. Um, that's quite a possibility. Uh, it seems like a distinct possibility actually being that, you know, this song in particular is something they're very passionate about. Um, but like I said, it's a global problem. So, you know, who knows? Um, but yeah, there's, they definitely found that flavor. Nothing was overplayed. It's, it's relatively simplistic. Um, but everything sort of sits exactly where it needs to for the tone of the overall sound they were going for. Um, yeah, it's a great mix. Uh, I like the vocals actually. There was some cool things. Like I said, there seemed like for a minute there, there was some sort of a spin on like Tibetan throat singing to get that sort of tribal kind of um corroboree kind of vibe in australia the aboriginal indigenous people they have what we call corroborees which is their sort of get togethers where they do a lot of dancing and singing and stuff like that a lot of didgeridoo stuff um again i'm not super familiar with that i'm actually more familiar with the cultures of of people from papua new guinea strangely enough um but yeah like like i said looking at this image right here um, this is, this was my childhood. I grew up around stuff like this and it was, uh, you know, that was an interesting experience. So, um, yeah, I don't know if I've got too much more to say about that other than if you guys could give me, um, uh, some, some ideas where to go with Gojira next and I'll, and I'll see what I can, what I can come up with. Um, as I said, I have this tendency when I just s sort of decided to strike out on my own and just pick a random song. I usually pick one that doesn't sound anything like the rest of the catalog. And I don't know, maybe that's because, you know, bands often do video clips for those songs. Um, cause they're different and they stand out, but, uh, yeah, this, this is, this was a wild choice. So, um, yeah. Okay. So I, I, I don't know if like Gojira has, um, really sold me on, um, where they stand out. And I think this was a bad example. Um, it's a great song. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not trying to diminish the song in any capacity. It's really good, but it's not what I expected from the hype. Um, and so I'm really curious to do more Gojira and find out where they, where they're really coming from. Um, if I brighten your day at all, uh, feel free to buy me a coffee. <laughs> There's a link in the description and don't forget to like, and subscribe and share guys. Like this channel is exploding. It's, it's crazy. Um, I'm at the point now where I'm sort of getting around you know, a hundred new subs a day. And that's actually starting to freak me out a little bit and it's blowing my mind. Um, but you know, it's because you guys are really passionate about the subject matter and, and the music and stuff like that. And, and, uh, I can't blame you. Everything that you guys have thrown my way up, you know, to this point has just been right up my alley. And I can see why you guys love bands like Ginger and, and Slaughter to Prevail and Lorna Shore and bands like that. So, um, cause I'm starting to as well. Anyway, that's about it for me. Thanks for checking in. Uh, I have been Primal Chaos and I'll catch you on the next one.